We're at Sheboygan Christian High School where tonight the Eagles take on conference rival Oostburg. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach, Chris Wright. Kid, coach, let's uh, talk a little bit about that JV game and how it might impact the second game, which I don't think will be very much, but the Christian JV team just beat Oostburg by two points. Might that impact the varsity game in any way? Oh, I don't know. Tonight you got an Oostburg squad here on the, in the red here that's you know, ranked up in the top of the state here, undefeated, 16-0. You had a JV squad in Oostburg today that came into Christian and lost. First time they've lost all year. So anything can happen when you roll the balls out, Marty. So, well, maybe tonight's the night for Christian. I was thinking when those JV kids come in the locker room, you know, the varsity guys see them all hooping and hollering over beating them. You know, it's got to have a positive effect rather than your JV team coming in with their tail between their legs. Absolutely, and I watched the last five, six minutes, a very competitive game, and I mean, the Oostburg kids took care of the basketball, which the varsity's going to have to do tonight, take care of the basketball. They got themselves a lead and hung on at the end to get the victory. All right, in doing our research, I came up with three players scoring in double figures for Oostburg plus another three that are averaging around seven or eight points. Uh, that's a lot of balance. Yeah, they have a lot of balance. And this is a squad I've watched. You know, I remember seeing these kids when they were freshmen this senior class year. They were over at the North Raider shootout, and they came in there and played in this JV tournament. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, when these guys are seniors, they're going to be pretty good. And you know what? They are pretty good. They're 16-0. and 0. They've already defeated Sheboygan North. So maybe and probably they're the best team in the area that we're going to be watching tonight. So they're very good. They got a couple twins, uh, Mike, Mike and uh, Mark Keller, and we know Craig Keller. We played basketball with him for years and years, and you know this class is really good. You know they're showing it this year. What does Christian have to do to uh, stay in the ball game and possibly win tonight? Well, one of the things they're going to have to do is they're going to have to handle the uh, zone by Oostburg. Oostburg is very big and very tall. How they can handle it, move the ball around, you know, maybe set some back screens or pin some guys to get some baskets because, you know, you know Oostburg's going to do that. It's going to have to be a very low-scoring game. Oostburg comes in just averaging 39 points uh, against their opponent scoring, so you know it's going to have to be score scoring that way. Another thing is... I looked at the uh, scoring in all the conference games this year, and Ootsburgs won all the games by double figures, except for one. And that was to Howard Grove, where they won 39-36, so it's very, very low scoring. So I think you got Christian here, going to have to take care of the basketball, try to get every opportunity that they can, and make their shot. I was just going to say it's going to be imperative for uh, Christian to be able to hit that outside shot. The other thing I thought I put down in my notes is I think uh, Christian still has to be a presence on the inside, whether it's on offense or defense. Yeah, I, I know Oostburg's bigger, they're taller and things like that. Christian's got some big kids too, but they're going to have to box out and they're going to have to allow one shot and out. There's no, no question about that. They, each guy's going to have to man up and box the guys up, and if you get position, those bigger guys can't get in there. But, you know, height might come down to it later on, but we'll see what happens. A lot of times, you know, we talk about this with Wisconsin football, with the size of their offensive line, it doesn't show up until the fourth quarter. Same thing with height and basketball. Yeah, and that's true. And they're, they're real tall over there in that red team. And, you know, this is, a, like I said before, this is a team that's destined to have a successful year. They've been, you know, thinking about this when they're a freshman. You know, we want to win a conference championship and do very well in the tournament. And they got that squad over there. Kevin Brunick definitely does. Uh, we have a couple of really experienced coaches. Brugink has 13 years. Uh, uh, Flipsy's got 14. So coaching's pretty tough. Yeah, it is. And I was thinking about that earlier too, Marty. They said, oh, we got Sheboygan losing, Christian Oostberg, and those are the three veterans of the CLC. And, you know, one thing I like about watching these coaches is before the games and things like that, they sit on the sidelines, they talk to each other, and, you know, almost... You know, very friendly relationship, and when you've been around the block a few years like Coach Lipsy and Coach Brunick, you know, you build those relationships, and it's kind of neat. All right, with that, we're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and a tip-off for tonight's ball game. United Church of Christ, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. Mommy, there's still be penguins around when I grow up. 
I sure hope so. Do more than hope. Since the 1970s, global warming has caused ice in the Antarctic to melt and populations of Adélie penguins have been rapidly declining ever since. There's still time to make a difference before the Adélie penguin vanishes along with its habitat. Go to defenders.org slash global warming to learn more. Why is it you two have so much trouble communicating? I don't like the way he talks to me. All I said was that you had a big osteo fight. <laughs> Well, what about the secrets you kept from me? Oh, so I didn't tell you about my drug allergies. Big that deal. That could have been nasty. How's your shoulder coming, anyway? Fine. I worked up to three-pound dumbbells yesterday. Oh. Just three weeks after surgery. That's pretty good. Communication is the best medicine. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Global warming. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. Uh, back at Christian High School, they're introducing the starting lineup for uh, Oostburg. They'll be going with number two, Alex Stecker. Number three, Mike Keller. Number five, Brad Prinson. Number 10, Nicholas Hubrixey. And number 23, Mark Keller. And now for the uh, Christian Eagles. I know uh, Christian is down, but this is a really a lousy crowd tonight. Yeah, well, I'm surprised the Red Nation ain't here either. Alex Tislau, number 11, is making a start for uh, the Eagles. Normally, uh, Oostberg travels well. As right, yeah, it's not like it's a long ways away. No. Zach Flipsy, number 22. Starting. Number 10, Kyle Calvert. Number 23, Brandon Wissey. And rounding out the starting five for the Eagles is number 33, Dustin Brower. I've got uh, Brower averaging 10 7, Zach Flipsey at about 12.6. Uh, some And Calvert is at 11. But uh, some of these scoring averages, at least for the Eagles, are not up to date. When I went to the website, they only had 14 games worth of stats. They've played uh, 16 games. They're seven and nine, Christian is coming in. Six and six in conference. Uh, as Chris mentioned in the opening, Oostburg is undefeated, 16 and 0 overall, 12 and 0 in uh, the Central Lakeshore Conference. Our officials tonight, we got a three-man crew Gil Minen and Todd Hunick, Tom Hunick from uh, Cedar Grove. And I don't know how this guy got on the crew, Todd Van Ness from Oostburg. is <laughs> rough in the game. Well, all these guys are from around here, and Todd Van Ness, I believe, played uh, in Oostburg. Well, we've seen kids from South uh, yeah. refereeing South games, so Oostburg controls the tap. Good. There was a picture of Coach Flipsy. Okay. And pass goes out of bounds. The pass was made by Brad Prinson. And Oostberg applies full court pressure. It's imperative that Oostberg be able to handle this pressure or it's going to be an awfully long night. <clears throat> Are you a little surprised they're opening up in a man-to-man? -man? Because uh, I know you talked about yeah, zone at I the think beginning. It, yeah, they play some man and then they'll switch up to their zone. They'll play big. They'll do both, Marty. And... Uh, they play good defense. Coach Brunig's always been known for his defense. Hard to the basket, but not be able to get it in was uh, Princeton. Very experienced squad on both of these uh, teams. Stecker's the guy that uh, if he has a good game, you can bet that the Flying Dutchmen are going to have a good game. He kind of runs the show out there from his point guard position. And uh, Stecker is only a junior, but he's a good one. 
Princeton uh, not having a good start to his night. You know, when they had the small schools play on TV for the first time, it's always, you know, they get nervous, Marty. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, nice little play by uh, the Eagles, but uh, Flipsy not able to get the basket in. Had a nice open shot from about 10 feet. Zach's having a very good year. Well, Wissy with a nice move, but couldn't get it in. And then fighting hard for the rebound was uh, Brandon Brandon Wissy. Missing the layup was Mark Keller, by the way. That name wrong. And throwing away. Can't do that. And then Usberg gives it right back. Maybe lot, you can. A lot of turnovers so far. Five. In a minute and a half. Reminds me a little bit of what uh, Aubrey Koister said about the beginning of the North-South game. Always some of the most ugly basketball you'd want to see because everybody was nervous. Well, oy, one, oy, oy. one thing about these teams, Marty, is you know a lot of these kids, you know, grow up or live in Oostburg, the Christian kids that is, and you know, so a lot of these kids know each other, um, and some choose to come up here to Sheboygan to go to the Christian school. Oostburg. Christian is basically their elementary and middle school is yeah. in Oostburg. That's their pipeline. Outside shot is up and in. A three-pointer by Hubrixi. And some of these kids for Oostburg went to Christian uh, elementary and middle school. You know, if it wouldn't be for Oostburg, Sheboygan might not have a Christian high school. Flipsy has his shot blocked. Wissy had a shot at the rebound or the tip away but couldn't come up with it. Stecker has it. Three point attempt is no good. And Keller's gonna get an over the back fall called on him. Jesse Vervaldi, here comes six foot three off the bench. That's pretty nice to have that kind of height coming in. I think Sheboygan North and South would love to have that coming in. Well, Tislow got uh, caught in the corner just where you don't want to be against uh, two guys that are taller than you and they couldn't get out of there. Another turnover, three to nothing, Oostburg. We're almost three minutes into the game. Stecker has it on top, trying to direct traffic. Outside shot is short, no good. Rebound over to Prince, and his shot is blocked. Stecker, Calvert has it. Goes hard, but right into the defender and gets called for the offensive foul. Good call there, Marty. Tom Hunick's been around. Need a shot of the crowd. It's probably a third full behind the score or on the team side where the benches are. And over on uh, our side, we're up in the balcony is probably uh, maybe a third to a half full, somewhere in that neighborhood. A lot of body there, Marty. Yeah, a lot of body, you're right. I'm surprised there was no call. Shot is uh, no good by Tislaw, but uh, Christian comes away with it. Christian's all for their first five and they're only down three. A back cut, nice pass in there, but the shot is blocked by Mark Keller. No shot. We're going to get uh, Rivaldi, Jesse Rivaldi with a walk. 
may have called uh, the wrong person scoring a basket for uh, Oosberg. It was uh, Mike Keller that oh. knocked home a three-pointer. Oh, Marty. <laughs> Mark Keller? Not Mike or Mike Keller? I got number three, Mike Keller. Oh, brother. Now I'm really messed up, Marty. And Wissy, what a nice turnaround jumper for two. It's not like they're scoring in droves, Chris. No. Figured out. <laughs> well, I know, but... <laughs> Well, you tell me three different people, and <laughs> three to two with five minutes left. Oh, nice jump shot there, basket made by Vervelde. That was a three-pointer. It's six to two. Under three minutes left in the first quarter. Chris mentioned that uh, Oosberg is used to playing low-scoring games. Well, they only give up 39 points a game, Marty. Shot by Wissy is off, no good. And Stecker has it. Good ball movement. Ball is no good. Princeton's gonna get called for another foul, or for a foul, I should say. Christian just one of eight. Tyler Hartman coming in, Chris, number 32. And Oosberg two of seven. Wow. But both of theirs are threes. Very low scoring. Christian is yet to commit a foul. Two minutes left in the first quarter. Oosberg has three. Flipsy. And we're going to get uh, another foul on Oosberg. This one's going to go against uh, Alex Stecker on a blockout. Took the uh, Christian player and blocked him right out of bounds onto the floor. Now we have 6-7 off the it. bench. <laughs> Watch underneath the basket, the blockout. See him ride him out, push him down. Couple fouls that way too. Calvert has it on the wing. Six to two, Oosberg. Tislow has it on top. Oosberg continuing in a man-to-man -man defense. And we're gonna get a foul called on number 11, Josiah Vervelde. There's your six, seven off the bench. <laughs> yeah. Well, he went to Christian elementary and middle school. Fifth team foul on uh, Oosberg. Christian has none. Flipsy trying to go over pressure at a shot blocked. Gets it back and then it's tipped out of bounds. Tipped out of bounds by Mike Keller. Not smart play by uh, Oosberg. Princeton's gonna get called for another foul fighting through the screen. And he'll be coming out. Checking in is gonna be Nick Hubrixie. Calvert in your screen now, tossing it in for the Eagles. And shuffling the feet down inside was uh, Dustin Brower. Now that last time it looked like they were in a zone, huh, on the inbounds? Yep. Flipsy was gonna have a hard time getting a shot off from the corner with uh, Keller down there, or Brent, yeah, Keller. That sh shot was way short. 1.15 remaining in the first quarter. It's six to two, Oosberg. Good defense by uh, Oosberg, and you know, you can't stop your dribble here, Marty. No, that's uh, 
What that's a what for. You know, if you're going to give up your dribble, you either better pass it or shoot it, and they're going to come and trap you, and that costs you your turnover. I like the second idea, shoot it. Six turnover now for Christian. Under a minute. Outside shot is way short again. Hubrixy on the uh, incomplete shot. <laughs> Chris is like, holy cow. This is bad. Keep coming. Under Flip a minute. Yeah, Flipsy has it. Thirty five seconds left. Six five Mike Keller on Flipsy. <laughs> Things are going to be tough for him tonight. Yeah, you're right. That, I was thinking the same thing. There's the same spot. He picks up his dribble and he turns it over again. Newsburg has it in the attack zone with 15, 16 seconds left. And they're going to be patient about it. They'll get the last shot. Good decision there. Very good decision there by Mike. Whistle before the shot. Not a bad foul, except that it's on their best player, Zach Flipsy. Stop that dry penetration. Got fouls to give. I know it's really, really early in the first quarter. First uh, foul on Flipsy in the first team foul. Inside feed. Foul is going to be on Brower. That'll be his first. Prevents an easy basket, probably. I don't know. I don't think the clock started right away when he got it either. But then it ran a little later, so I don't know. So it all worked out in the end. Yeah. Train it loud. I won't even get down the first column at this rate. It'd be good if there was a paper shortage. Well, no. Poor shooting continues even from the free throw line. Keller one for two, it's seven to two, and that's how the first quarter ends. Hoosberg on top, seven to two. You know, like for a car? Well, what about renewing my driver's license? Don't bring your government questions to just anyone. Go to firstgov.gov, the official source of federal, state, and local government information. And don't everybody chime in at once. I joined the National Guard and never thought I'd be saving lives. It's more than money for college. It's built my character and given me a sense of accomplishment. Now I'm on a career path and I'm the leader of my team. I put on the uniform and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM. There are those empty stands we were talking about. Good shot, Eric. Steve Reiner on the top camera. Eric Wiesman running the floor camera. And another turnover, throwing to nobody. And uh, Scott Mailoff in the truck. And uh, Scott wanted to do a few more replays, but there was nothing to replay. <laughs> Kick out Hubrixy, can't get it to go. Brower with a nice rebound, got good inside position on uh, Stecker. Hoosberg continuing in a man to man defense and uh, another turnover. Hoosberg's now 2 of 10, Christian's 1 of 10. And offensive foul is going to be called on. Mike Keller, that'll be his second. I don't know about that. But, you know, he flopped good enough to make it work look good. 
First time these teams met, Marty, it was 63-39, a win for Oostburg down there, but at the end of the first quarter, it was just 14-12. to They Christian hung in there. Uh, uh, I know you didn't see the replay, Chris, but what looked like uh, got uh, Keller the fall was the fact that he lowered his shoulder. Right. Don't pick up the dribble. Nine turnovers for Christian. And Flipsy gets called for the offensive foul. There you're going to see it. Right there. Left his feet, Marty. Yeah. Uh, Zach has two fouls. He stays in the ball game. Christian in the zone, 2-3. Hubrix, he gets inside and then throws it away. And Brett Flipsy calls a timeout. I believe it's gonna be a 30 second timeout. Yes, it is. Well, you know, we certainly didn't expect this. I mean, both teams are not playing very well. I mean, uh, you could almost say they're playing bad. Yeah, Kevin Bruning can't be happy uh, for Oostburg the way they're playing and uh, Coach Flipsies, you know, we, we know that Oostberg's going to play good D. You just got to wear them down and at least get shot opportunities. You know, right now you have 10 turnovers and 10 shot attempts. I mean, that's not going to get it done. We said in the beginning you're going to have to shoot the ball well. Some of the Oostberg faithful. I agree with you there, Chris. Uh the 10 turnovers, I mean, that's 10 shot opportunities, you know, and even if you're making just 20%, you know, it's four points. Yep, and you'd be right there. I mean, mm -hmm. you, if you uh, knew that you had held uh, Oostberg to seven points in the first quarter, you think, oh my gosh, we must be winning the game. Well, Wissy does the same thing, does one dribble and then stops in, on the wing and he's pressured. Yeah. and. Uh, there isn't good spacing either by the Christian Eagles. If you look, when he gets uh, done with his one dribble, even there he's pretty close to Flipsy. His turnaround jumper rolls off. Had a good attempt at it, but uh, couldn't get it in. He's 0 for 5 so far. Stecker with a 13-footer rims off, and Flipsy with the rebound, but he gets fouled. And here's where Christian can get right back in the game, popping in their free throws. There's uh, just under six minutes left in the half, and Oostberg already with seven fouls. And a good shot of Zach. Flipsy with his first point of the night. Makes it seven to three. Looking for seven to four with this free throw. And nothing but the bottom of the net. Six minute mark. Quarter number two. A well, good block inside. And then tipped out of bounds by Adam Hunick. Josiah Verveldi back in. He's a big kid. 6'7", 6'7", sophomore. And if I remember correctly, he had a real nice game over at North in that uh, Raiders shootout championship game. Oostberg working the ball around nicely. I will say this, he needs to get in the weight room. Big kid, but he's got to yeah. get bigger and stronger. Right. Well, that'll happen once he gets a little older and fills yep. out. Stecker yep. with a turnover on that, threw it out of bounds. Wissy wanted to go deep. Eight turnovers for Oostberg, two, and another turnover. Unforced, too, I might say. Uh, Flipsy was just in the corner, going to head up the floor and uh, lost it. 
Tossing it in is Mark Keller. Wisberg doing a good job of working the ball around. Hervaldi couldn't get the three to go. Did have a good look at the basket. Kick out to Keller. He nails a three. Mark Keller with a three point basket. 10 to four, Hoosberg on top. The thing with the Dutchman too, Chris, is once they get on top and you get later in the ball game, oh. they're very patient. You know, oh, it's yeah. hard to come back on those guys. Oh yeah. North found that out. Vervelde over the back of Brower, no call, but he did tip it out of bounds. Christian will keep it. Yeah, that was a 56 or 55 52 win, I believe, in the Raiders shootout. Flipsy open. Again, shot not going down for him, and he's the guy they had to have going there, his top, the top scorer. Oh, long three pointer is up and good by Tyler Hartman. Off the bench. They are four of 10 from three point range. They've only attempted four uh, twos, I believe, Marty. Ten threes. That's pretty amazing. Especially for a team so much bigger. Browers turnaround, jumpers no good. Wissy battling underneath, and we're gonna get a tie up. No, they're gonna say that Wissy was out of bounds. Yep, you're right. You give him a turnover on that? No, okay. I'm just uh, another miss. <coughs> oh, okay. All right. They are one for 13. Here you're gonna see, take a look at 23 in white. He was on the line apparently, he was. Butsky was right there. Derriere, Arsh. <laughs> Dupa. Stecker, no good. A Flipsy tried to tip it out to a teammate but Usberg was there. Vervaldi, little turnaround. Brower with the rebound. A nice little move inside by uh, Vervaldi. And we're gonna get an offensive foul on Mark Keller. Pushing Brower down. Dustin Brower will be at the line shooting a one and one. This is a ninth team fall on uh, Oosberg. Oh, I see Coach Keller is in the house. Craig Keller down in the corner with a tie on down there. Craig was a very good basketball player too. Yeah. Very uh, unselfish player, could shoot. He never passed me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he can shoot too, he's just a good player. One for two trip for uh, Brower, it's 13 to five, under three minutes. Ball tipped away, and good scrap. Down on the floor was Calvert getting the ball for uh, the Eagles. Fade away J, no good by Hunick. Oh, right. <laughs> Adam Hunick with an obvious reach in. Fourth foul on uh, the Eagles. 232 remaining, it's 13 to five. We are not running out of ink up here. <laughs> or paper, there you're gonna see it. Jesse Vervelde has it on the wing. Stecker open from outside the line. He gets got it in. First points for Adam Stecker. And another three for the Dutchman. That's 16 to five. And 
Five of them are threes. All their baskets are threes? Uh, Everyone. Yep, every single one is a three-pointer. Their other basket or other point is a free throw. Yep, five threes. Wissy does the same thing on the other side of the court, Chris. You know, he does the oh. one dribble, and then, yeah, that was not, I didn't think that was a good call. He got raked from behind. That's a and tough that, call, and I know, think a lot he, of flops and pushes. And I mean, I mean, I know there's a little physicalness, but that's about the fifth push we've seen or offensive foul, uh, both situations here. I mean, all right, the fans are complaining just like we are. <laughs> we must have got that right, or at least you did. At least we got one right. <laughs> Same play, they just keep continually running off that double, double screen. Yeah, Tislow, what a good job of getting through, prevent the shot. Ubrick see on top again. Stecker feeling it with another three. Wow, we. <laughs> Do you think we could go the whole half with no twos for we, one? Hey, we only got a minute and 15 seconds left. <laughs> We got uh, a chance. You didn't make any twos and a half, but you're winning by over 10. <laughs> We're going to get a uh, double dribble on Adam Hunick. That might have been his dad calling a double dribble on him. There you get a good shot of uh, Kevin Brugink. Brugink. They're going to hold, bring her out. Up by 14, under a minute now. Oh. There he is again. Same play. Stecker rounding out, had a good look at it. Boy, they didn't even look, they don't even look smooth handling the ball when they're not being pressured. They're just having trouble hanging on to the ball tonight. Wissy had it tipped away. And uh, Eagles not being strong with the ball, that's for sure. 20 seconds left until halftime. Chris hoping for a half where Usberg has only threes. Well, we've been doing a lot of games together, Marty, but I've yeah, this never been to a, a game where I've seen a whole half and we got one two-point basket. <laughs> Inside feed. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't turn around and shoot it. Not uh, good clock awareness that time, but we're at halftime here at uh, Christian High School where uh, the Flying Dutchman of Oostburg lead it 19 to five. Moving is so much of who we are. It's easy to take it for granted. Multiple sclerosis stops people from moving. We exist to make sure it doesn't. Join the movement, the National Multiple Sclerosis Society at nationalmssociety.org. We go to any extreme to protect our children here. And here, And here. Well, there's a great way to protect our kids here against diseases like cancer, heart disease, and obesity. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, vegetarian foods. Now you can protect your kids from the inside out. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. Back at uh, Christian High School where uh, Oostberg leads at halftime by a score of 19 to five. That's right, five by the Eagles. Uh, halftime uh, scoring as we uh, went into halftime, Zach Flipsy had two points, Brandon Wissy had two points, and Dustin Brower had one point for the Eagles. For the Oostberg Flying Dutchman, they were led by their uh, point guard, Alex Stecker. He made uh, two three-pointers in the late in the second quarter. Matter of fact, he had the last six points for the Flying Dutchman. And then uh, 
Nick Hubrix, he had three points. He actually had the first basket of the game, and that's one where I was telling Chris, oh, no, this guy scored it or that guy scored it. It was Hubrix, and I'm sorry about that. Nick, uh, Jesse Verveldi had a three-pointer. Mark Keller had four points. He had a three and a free throw. Tyler Hartman had three points. And uh, talk a little bit about the shooting, Chris. Oh, boy. Or lack thereof. Well, and Christian, you gave up 30% shooting Newsburg. Problem is, you're down by 14. Uh, you are just one of 14 uh, shootings, along with 14 turnovers. Uh, part of it's the defense of Oostburg. They're real tough and big and long, and uh, they make a lot of teams look like this. Oostburg comes out, first possession of the second half. A good inside shot by uh, Mike Keller, but he couldn't get it to go. It don't come much easier than that, Chris. No, if you're just joining us, uh, Oostburg is yet to make a two-point basket. Oh, hey. nice driving shot by Calvert for two. This is a second leading score. That's his first shot attempt. Nineteen to seven, Oostburg on top. Almost a steal and then tipped out of bounds by uh, Mark Keller. Oostburg had a nice football season too, Marty. I believe they lost in maybe the third round of the playoffs. There you see Gil Minen, the official out of Cedar Grove. Zach Flipsy trying to get it in. And throws deep, stolen by Hubrixie. Another short jumper is off. Keller can't buy a basket. Keller came into the game averaging over 14 per game, leading scorer for the Flying Dutchman. He has yet to score, and yet they still lead by 12 points. Yeah, and uh, neither of the Keller boys have gotten a lot of shot, even attempts. He's just got to turn and shoot that, Marty. I agree with you there. Because this is the result of you not shooting. Calvert turns it over. Princeton uh, back starting. No good. Rebound shot from in close by Hartman is no good. And that's three very makeable shots by the Flying Dutchman that are not going in. Eagles need to capitalize. This is a little cut off from the baseline. And uh, Keller with a good block of the Christian player to get the ball. Lewisburg has it. Oof. We are watching varsity basketball, aren't we, Chris? A 10 footer, I thought he would have got that in. He was a little further away from the basket, but Keller not able to get it to drop. Tough start to the second half. Wissy with four rebounds now. Wissy from in close, couldn't get it. Pretty good pressure on that shot. That was a tough shot. Princeton inside position had his shot blocked, but then there's a whistle, and I believe they're gonna get Dustin Brower with the foul. For uh, Dustin, that's his second foul. Christian didn't have a lot of fouls in that first half. No, they didn't. Princeton on the line looking for his first points of the night. Two for two trip, 21 to seven. That equals the biggest lead by Hoosberg. Flipsy being guarded by the much taller Mark Keller and it really makes it difficult for Zach to be able to get shots off. 
And Brandon Wissey forcing the action. Draws a foul. Mike wow. Keller picks up his third. Yeah, they're going to bring in uh, Josiah Verveldi, and also coming in is going to be Jesse Verveldi. Verveldi's all over the place. And Stecker coming in. Not enough basketballs for all those Verveldis out there, Chris. We'll see, not a good release on that second shot. That was hard. Josiah, short arm that one. Coming away with the rebound was uh, Adam Hunick. Flipsy goes from one six five guy to a six six guy. <laughs> wow, and you know what? Uh, something about uh, scouting and stuff. The Oostberg kids knew where the play was happening before the uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, Christian kids were there. <laughs> as soon as you heard it, you heard them come popping out on the screen because they knew it was a screen and a roll. That foul goes on Dustin Brower now. Board has him for only two falls. I could have swore he picked up a fall in the first half. He's got two this quarter. Oh, I believe you. I believe you, Marty. <laughs> you know how those these guys cheat, right? Yeah. <laughs> Josiah Verveldi, no good. I told you there weren't enough basketballs for all those Verveldis out there. And another easy shot missed by Princeton. And then a putback is good by Josiah Verveldi. And he's fouled. Well, that was three chances. Well, his first basket, he missed his first six. Hey, my fouls are now right for uh, Brower. Now he does have three. Ooh. Little line drive, but it goes in. It's 24 to eight. Holy Christ. What are these guys thinking of? Jeez. We don't even look that bad on Wednesday night. We might on Friday, though. Well, you know, you're there. <laughs> Talk to me. Well, Stecker goes in, and he gets called for the offensive foul. Hey, I just want to make a note on Vervaldi's shot there. That was the first two-pointer of the game. Holy cow, you're right. For no, Oosberg. not of the game. For, for Oosberg. Oosberg. yep, yep. In the ball game is uh, Devin DeMaster, number 24, and we're going to get a travel called. Brandon Wissey going to the ground, to the court. Sixteen-point lead by uh, Oosberg is their largest. Oh, inside feed to Prince, and he's on the trampoline. Puts in an easy two. Five second call, Zach Flipsy not able to get it in. Keller going hard to the hoop, put it up and in. With authority. With authority is absolutely right. Good call, Chris. And timeout by Christian. They're down by 20 now with uh, 4 one remaining in the third quarter. And uh, boy, oh boy, they are starting to take charge on. They missed how many, three, four real easy shots to start the second half. Well, and now Christian's just struggling to take care of the basketball against the press. Or they, get, they could handle that situation, but now. It's when they got it in the half court that they threw it away. Yeah, now it's the other way around. There you see it, 28 to eight. It's 
Scott got that score off real quick because it wasn't uh, quite right. But we get the idea. <laughs> So far, the Eagles have scored three in the first, two in the first, three in the second, and now three so far here in the third. Two, three, and three. That totals out to eight, and that's what they have. Princeton, gliding in the lane, couldn't get his shot off. Outside the line, three-pointer is up and good by Jesse Verveldi. Back to the three-pointers, Chris. Yep, they're doing that well tonight. <laughs> Eagles trying to run an exchange and the, the two kids from Christian Exchanging ran into each other. Stecker on the three on Two does the right thing, pulls up from 10, but can't get it in. They had a good shot of uh, the back of uh, Zach Flipsy. Oh boy, that's a tough call. <laughs> Jesse Verveldi picking up the foul. As he backs you up, backs you up. Wait till I get a good push. Yeah. You schedule this game. Hey, we can blame it on Coutser. He's not here tonight. Ah, it's good that we see uh, Oosberg. I like this. We're going to see him again when they go over to. Uh, I, I like think doing we these do. three games Christian Lutheran and that's, uh, against the other ones. Those are four good games to have, Marty. Yeah, that's going to be our next game. Our, uh, the last game that we have scheduled this season, during the regular season anyway, is uh, Oosberg at uh, Lutheran. That's on February 25th. Our next game, Chris, is going to be uh, over here again. We're going to be here two weeks in a row. It's uh, Friday, February 11th, when Lutheran comes over and plays Christian. So the Holy War by the shore coming up. Good battle inside by Brower and Princeton. And possession arrow belongs to the Eagles, so they'll bring it in. Good job that time by uh, Brandon Wissey. Good defense by Stecker. Yeah, he's right in uh, the hip pocket of uh, Zach Flipsy. And then we get a whistle on uh, this side of the court. Fall on Brant Wilterdink. Flipsy open for just a second. Got the shot off, but again a little short. Flipsy's all for eight tonight. Got a couple of free throws back in uh, the start, the second quarter. That are his only two points. Then again with a minute left. No basket, they're gonna call Wilterdink with a travel. Flipsy had some uh, good looks early and uh, just couldn't get the ball to go in and uh, since then they pretty much tightened up on him. Yeah. Hasn't gotten many good looks at the, at the basket. I'm gonna say with a minute 10, Sheboygan Christian has two baskets tonight. Calvert with a travel in the corner. Christian really struggles with their scoring. Uh, Flipsy is uh, their best scorer, Calvert, a little bit. But, uh, boy, you shut off your best guy and, you're, you know, and you have trouble scoring to begin with. That really hurts. And Gilminan calls a travel. No basket, no foul, nothing. 
Now, I agree with the last one was maybe not a travel because he kept his dribble, but that time uh, Keller did shuffle his feet. Flipsy being guarded by Alex Stecker. He's got to like <laughs> seeing a shorter guy on him. Yeah, now he's got speed against him. Well, just not good decisions on the passes, Chris. I mean, guys break underneath the basket and they're guarded and they're still trying to force it in. All goes on Brandon Wissey. Four team fouls on Christian, five team fouls on Usberg. There's under a minute left in the third quarter. It's 31 to eight. It's uh, kind of amazing that Scott in the truck is able to keep up, keep the correct score with the pace we're going at. <laughs> Good job in there, Scott. <laughs> Stecker left wide open from three-point land, and he nails it. He has nine points. And all another three. Th all threes. And stolen away. No shot. And we're at the end of three quarters of play. 34 to eight, Usberg. What makes something amazing? Is it doing what people once believed impossible? Or is amazing something you become? We believe in doing the amazing, in dominating air, space, and cyberspace, inventing technologies, in doing the unimaginable. But our most amazing accomplishment isn't what we've done, it's who we've become. Global warming is a problem. Problem. It's a problem. I wanted to do something to become more energy efficient. To protect the environment. To protect the future. So I turned to Energy Star for help. Energy Star is helping me be part of the solution. Everyone can join the fight against global warming. Go to energystar.gov to learn what you can do. Together. Together. Together, we can all make a difference. Alex Stecker leads uh, Usberg with nine points and then following up with uh, six each is uh, Mark Keller and uh, Jesse Verveldi. And that time Mike Keller puts it in and he's fouled. He's gonna have a chance at a three point play. Keller had the first basket of the game. No, he didn't. No, I, that's right. I forgot to change it on there. Hubrix, he did. Darn. Yeah. Oosberg now 12 of 37. They've hit eight three-pointers tonight, Marty. There you saw Craig Keller for just a second on your screen. Thirty-seven to eight. For Mike, those were his first three points of the game. There you see Coach Broyle in the green. He's your uh, coach at Marion College. Been there about 23 years. Wissy puts it in. Keller. Christian now three of 22. Wow. 23 turnovers, 22 shots. Tislow threw it away. Keller put the head down, took it to the hoop. He has seven straight points. Boy, when they want to go, they look good. They look good and smooth. Stecker kicks it up to Princeton, gets it inside to Keller and back out, and now they work it around. Hoosberg's been very patient tonight. 
And ball goes out of bounds. Probably a few too many turnovers for Coach Brunig. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially in that first half. Yeah, he's, they're up to uh, eight. Ooh, not that many, Chris. Let's think here. Six, 10, 14. 14 TOs. You know, other than a couple of times on inbounds plays, uh, Usberg has played man-to-man -man the entire game. Yep. Didn't have to see that 1-3-1 one, one tonight. Wissy, turnaround jumper is no good. Didn't even draw iron in that shot. Oh, nice play by Usberg. And then Vervelde misses the layup. Great pass by Mark Keller. Diagonal pass to Vervelde cut into the hoop. And we're gonna get a foul. Nick Hubrick see. It's his second. Wow. They were really on. Keller was on Flipsy that time and it was just all over him. Not in a bad way, I just mean, you know, he wasn't letting them get the ball. Calvert has it on the baseline, dribbles it out. Flipsy setting it up. 41 to 10, it's been all Oosberg. Although they did have an extremely slow start in the first quarter. Scoring only seven points. Quarter scoring for the Eagles has been two in the first, three in the second, and three in the third. And they got a quick two here in the fourth, but uh, wow. You haven't seen scoring like this since uh, St. Dominic's girls played. <laughs> Wissy shot no good. Oh. Rebound put back by Zach Flipsy rolls in. The hoop didn't want it, but it went down anyway. Outside Jay is no good. Vervelde with the rebound. That shot was missed by Vervelde, Jesse Vervelde. Princeton wanted the lob, but uh, Keller wasn't going to throw it in there. A little too chancy. Josiah had a nice shot, couldn't get it, but gliding through, getting the rebound was Hartman and he put it up and in and he's fouled. You know, you wanna be a contributor to a good team. Tyler Hartman is a sophomore. That's his third offensive rebound off the bench. Hartman not able to finish off the three-point play, however. Good work by that young man. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes all the... He's been a spark when he's gotten in there tonight, that's yeah. for sure. Certain people get all the... Calvert. Glancing blow, no good. Wissy's shot is blocked. Coming away with it is Mark Keller. Princeton has it inside. Jump shot over the defense, and uh, Usberg has just had some real tough luck on a lot of good looking shots here in the second half. And we get a foul on Jesse Vervelde. I think that, uh, yes, going to the line will be Adam Hunick. You know, when you get into a game like this, Chris, you just hope, you know, I'm talking about uh, Brett Flipsy now, you just hope that somehow, you know, they finish up the game strong and have a little bit of a spark because it's uh, really been a downer tonight. Yep. Uh, burn the disc.
Oh, in and rimmed out. Tough break. That's Princeton seven rebound there, Marty. Yeah. He had a tough start to the game, but uh, but the, he's coming on strong here in the fourth quarter. Checking in for the Eagles is Greg Scheidt. I see some new players here, Marty. Derek Bolt in for the uh, Hoosberg Flying Dutchman. Moving him back. Taking it hard to the hoop and again missing an easy shot. This time it was Wolterdink. They've uh, left at least 10 points out on the floor in this uh, second half. I agree. Good hands by Flipsy and does a nice job of getting in front of the defense and then hits the layup. Oh, can you get a replay of that, Scott, that last basket, even though it's a full timeout? I just want to show the fans something that uh, Flipsy did that uh, was really good to get himself open for that uh, layup. He's pretty much even as he steals the ball near midcourt and then as he's taking it to the hoop, he crosses over to the right side and gets in front of the defender. Right there, they're even. Now watch him cross over in front. Right there, he got the guy behind him and that uh, prevented that uh, defender from blocking the shot. This is your job, man. You're supposed to be calling that. You're the color guy. Why don't you do, why don't you do play by play? <laughs> we could switch sometime. That would be okay. Stu would always say that. Let's switch. But then he never would. <laughs> Three thirty-four remaining in the ball game. Usberg on top by a cozy forty-three to fifteen. Chris is hoping this is how the Super Bowl ends up with the Green Bay way up. Not a good pass that time by the sophomore Hartman. Calvert has uh, been pretty silent. He's one of the leading scorers for the Eagles. And uh, Tislow trying to make the impossible pass to Wissy. Got it to the girl in the first row. Making a pass at her or what? Well, he not only made a pass yeah. at her, he threw her the ball too. <laughs> Hartman had the ball tipped away and then there's a whistle. He'll be going to the line to shoot. Hartman was just at the line. He missed uh, a chance at a three point play. This will be his second trip. Foul goes on Flipsy, his third. Carter Zeman in the ball game, along with Dustin Velbloom, number four. Shoot it. Nathan Josie in for the Dutchman, and so is a Derek Bolt was in before we mentioned his name. Scheidt, Wissy. Tislau. Oh, inside feed. Basket is up and good by Velbloom, and he's fouled. Big boy. Yeah. Samuel Andringa, number 30 in for uh, the Eagles. Tom Wilkie in number 32 for uh, Christian. Oh boy. Free throw shooting has not been a strength of uh, Oosberg tonight.
Whistle out near half court. Kislow has it in the back court. 2.20 remaining in the ball game. There you see the score. Hoosberg up by 30. And a good tip away. And missing the layup was Zyman. <laughs> Our next basketball game is going to be, we're going to be right back here. Basket is up and good by Derek Bolt. When uh, Lutheran comes in to play their uh, city rival. And another chance to see Sam Decker. And that time Bolt finishes off the three point play. 48 to 15. There you see one of the younger fans. Clock rolls under two minutes. 158 remaining. Josie commits the foul. Tislaw with a chance to get on the board, Chris. Ugh. Rebound put back is <laughs> no good. Yikes. Loading it up from outside the line, but not getting it in was Zeman. Zeman, pardon me. And Eric Wiesman showing the good hands down there underneath the basket. All right, this happens every once in a while. Number 12 is not on our list. Nope, take that back. Joshua Sider. Looking at the wrong roster. Oh, hard to the basket, but not getting it in was shite. It's fouled. There we are. Hey, how about that? Yeah, here at Christian, we have, we're have we right above the stands up here a little bit. and This the might balcony. be the wrestling room back here, but right now it's set up for uh, ping pong and air hockey. Tight. Got the first, couldn't get the second. Taking it to the basket. Yeah, Bolt. Picking up the picking up the foul. Going to the line is going to be. Flesh Fresser, Jordan. Actually, that was Samuel Andringa who committed the foul. Flesh Fresher makes a pair. Fifty one to sixteen. <laughs> Loading it up from outside the line, but not hitting it was uh, Flush pressure. Under a minute.
Boy, they do run a lot for the three-point shot, Chris. You're right. Luther Abel letting it go out of bounds. He'll toss it in. Cost himself a rebound. There you see the brain trust for uh, Usberg. Andy Bonus through one of the assistants, used to be at North. Oh, yeah. Twenty seconds and counting. Lemahue uh, turned it over. Jamison Adi in the ball game also. He hasn't been in before. And. Uh, Luther Abel we mentioned, and this is going to be it. Well, Chris, they've, well, they changed the score. It's now ends up 50 <laughs> to 16, and that's actually what I had on the book. I made a little, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter now. Final score is going to be 50 to 16, and uh, I'll be real honest with you, Usberg did not look good to me. They didn't look like a second, like no. the second ranked team in the state. No, but they didn't the look sharp still was either. an easy win. No, and sometimes you play down a little of the competition and uh, they, they got a good ball club. They're nice and big and uh, it's easy for us to stand up here and, and say things when uh, we don't have to face 6'7", 6'5", 6'4", 6'3", kids. Uh, so it made it very difficult for uh, Christian to get anything on track tonight. And You brought something up real early and I thought it was a key point. You know, even though I don't think it had an impact on the outcome they were going to win. Uh, but putting Keller on Flipsy really shut him off and uh, there wasn't much he could do all night and uh, kind of closed the door right there I guess in a sense but uh, Christian just didn't come out. They had opportunities, uh, a lot of turnovers by Usberg early and they didn't shoot well but uh, just not enough. Our next ball game is going to be uh, next Friday when Lutheran comes in here to play Christian in the second uh, Holy War by the Shore. Uh, for the crew Steve Reiner, Eric Wiesman on the cameras, Scott Mailoff in the uh, truck spinning the dials. For my partner, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.